Okay, what is your name? Tony Stewart. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was your graduation year? 89. Um, what were some major historical moments that happened in your high school career? If you can remember. Uh, well, at the end of when I graduated high school was when I finished racing go-karts and I actually got my first opportunity to drive a bigger style race car, which was the three-quarter midgets that they run at the fairgrounds once a year. Awesome. Um, and what was the school atmosphere like whenever you were here? It was a lot of fun. We um, Senior hall was always a lot of fun because as soon as class was out, everybody ran and everybody stood at their lockers with their <laughs> locker doors wide open. But and everybody knew exactly how long it took to get to their next class and one by one you'd see people start leaving. The ones that you saw leaving first had further to go to get to class, but everybody always made it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what did you enjoy most about your high school career here? Uh, all the friends that I made. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the best part about it is a lot of the people that were friends back then are still friends of mine now. And, you know, some people left town after they went to college and, and went other places but there's a lot of people in town that stayed and uh, are all still friends with each other that we, yeah, yeah. That we went to school with. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, and what was the rivalry between North and East like? If you remember? We didn't like East. <laughs> we didn't like East at all back then. I'm pretty sure it's probably still the same now yeah. but it, we didn't like East. East didn't like us mm -hmm. and, and uh, if you had brown or orange on anywhere around here you were looking for trouble. That's funny. <laughs> um, what was your favorite class and why? I loved all my math classes. I just, for some reason, I always liked math. Mm -hmm. and, and oddly enough, math and geometry are what we use the most in my career now with racing because mm -hmm. ev everything's numbers and, and geometry of how we work on these race cars. So mm -hmm. it was, uh, I didn't realize how important it was then, but I, and oddly enough, that w those were my favorite classes and then they pertain yeah. to what I do now. That's cool. Um, do you have a favorite teacher that you had? I don't know. All, you know, I liked almost all of my teachers I liked. Mm -hmm. There were only a couple teachers that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, what were some of the restaurants around here that you liked to eat at? Mm. So we used to go, at the time it was the Olympia, was it the Olympia, Amber? <coughs> yes. So it was the Olympia next door and they had its ginormous wall of candy. I mean, every candy you can think of they had. But they had little square pieces of pizza, or you could go another block to uh, Becker's and get hot dogs and hamburgers. And uh, then I think our last year or two of school, I think, is when they put the Taco Bell in. Mm -hmm. So we had that. We had Pasquale's Pizza down the road the other direction. So we had a lot of places we could oh, go yeah. for lunch. Um, what was the hit place to meet up? Uh, I think everybody kind of just went to the Olympia, if I remember right. It was easy. Yeah, just close. Um, who was the principal when you were here, if you remember? If you don't, it's Do you fine. remember who the principal was? <laughs> I don't remember who the principal was. Trouble, I, mm -hmm. I, I only get re remember going to the principal's office one time, and it was very short, so I, I don't remember who the principal yeah. was. Doing I was late office. a lot. I knew the secretary, but I knew the office, but I don't know That's funny. who that was. Um, did you have any senior projects or anything like that? No. I, I was so busy racing that I, a lot of the... Like I got most of the big classes out of the way early and then I just had smaller classes my senior year that I had to fill in mm -hmm. with. So I didn't really have anything big my senior year. Gotcha. Um, what did the yearbook look like when you were in school? Actually oh well, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it, it looked like miss. this. So. <laughs> I don't know, I, I haven't seen a lot of other yearbooks, but it was um, it was pretty, pretty accurate of what you saw in class around then. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you saw this, the people that were the the funny characters, oh, yeah. uh, you know, in school were represented in the yeah. book very well, and uh, you know all the different departments and, and you know classes mm -hmm. and stuff that the kids uh, that we went through were all in there. That's awesome. Um, how many people were in your school total? If you Amber, how many were in our senior class? Four hundred and sixty yeah, some odd. Yeah. So it wasn't very many. I don't know how many would have been total in the class. Then that would have been what two thousand. What's right that? around 2,000, less than 2,000, 1,800 maybe? Yeah, it was less than If it was the same, if there was the same in every, every class, mm -hmm. it would have been around 1,800 probably. Mm -hmm. And what were the hot styles back then? <laughs> um, okay. For the guys, we actually, believe it or not, guys, and this didn't really, well, some of it did transfer to our senior year. Guys had long hair on the back, they had mullets, 
and some of them had mullets that were permed in the back. Um, the girls had big, huge hair. I mean, it was there was a extreme Aquanet hairspray st uh, shortage in Columbus, Indiana. Yeah. They had big hair, and then I guess it, ta it got to where it just went from big hair to kind of a triangled hair. <laughs> For some reason, so uh, the girls had a the girls had to do a lot of work to come to school yeah. each day. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what was the defining moment of your high school career? Graduating. <laughs> I think more than anything, my parents were just happy I graduated. So I was one of those students that I was just bored. I, I got bored easily, and I still get mm -hmm. bored easily. But I didn't. I was always thinking about racing, and I wasn't thinking about what I needed to do in yeah. class. But um, I think my parents were just happy I graduated because I just never really applied myself like I did to my racing. Oh yeah, what's well, a big accomplishment? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what, in your opinion, made your time at North unique? Mm. Versus all the rest of the time, I really don't know. Do you? I mean, it's mm -hmm. you know, I think it's. The eighties were awesome. Yeah, I I, li I liked all the music that we had mm -hmm. when we were in school. Um, you could understand it. Right. <laughs> you could understand all the words. Yeah. So I don't know. It just seemed like things were, you know, things were pretty simple when when we were in school. I mean, you didn't have, you didn't have to worry about people with guns and you know Name knives and I mean people used to kids used to come to school in pickup trucks with guns on racks, you know, shotguns mm -hmm. on their racks, their pickup trucks because they were getting ready to go hunting after school, yeah. and it was no big deal. Nobody thought anything about it, and mm -hmm. you know they're. There were the occasional fist fights, but that was it. That's as violent as, yeah. it, as it ever got. So I think we were pretty lucky in my era mm -hmm. that um, you know we didn't have all the drugs and and you know problems with weapons and violence that they have yeah. now. That's really good. Um, what clubs or sports were you um, involved in? Uh, I made the freshman baseball team until my report card came out, and then. <laughs> I didn't make the baseball team after that, so uh, that was the only thing I really that that was the one sport that I really wanted to play because that was the only thing outside of racing that I really oh, yeah. enjoyed was baseball. So, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I didn't do a good enough job of it. That's when I realized that I wasn't applying myself in school, mm -hmm. and so I picked up the pace a little bit after oh, I got yeah. <laughs> got kicked off the freshman team. <laughs> okay, um, so you raced. Like, what was your like school schedule? Did you have to like? You raced and then do homework there that night, or what would you do like to practice? Uh, at that time, I was racing go karts, and we um, there were some Fridays that I was technically I was sick, <laughs> and my mom would have to call in in the morning and say I was sick and wasn't coming into school. But mm -hmm. my teachers that that I had class with knew where I was at yeah. and and would give me the homework to take with me. So while we were driving down the road to go to a race, and it might be in Florida, Georgia, New York, mm -hmm. uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, it, it may be a long ways away. So um, I would always have my homework with me right. and I could do my homework while we were driving mm -hmm. to and from the races and have it ready for Monday. That's good. Okay, that's all I have. Go ahead. Yeah. See, these were the easy ones now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're gonna now this one's getting ready to really throw the hard ones at me. <laughs> think a little bit more about these. So when you were at North, did you see yourself becoming a NASCAR driver? Like what exactly did you see yourself becoming? I never dreamed I would be a NASCAR driver when I was in school. I was just hoping that if I got to the sprint car and midget level, I thought that those kind of cars, if I could get to those, that I would be, have made it in my racing career. Mm -hmm. um, looking back, how did you feel your time in North shaped you as a person overall? Well, I think, you know, the the kids that you hang around with, there's and I think this still continues today. I mean, there's such a wide variety of kids that you go to school with and their their families' incomes are high to low, their personalities are shy to very outgoing. You learn a lot about people and how to deal with people. And, uh, you know, I think the thing I learned is I had friends that were, that their parents were doctors and lawyers, and I had friends that their parents could barely afford to give them lunch money each day. But you learn to understand what their life was like even though your life might be different and I kind of fell in between but it, you learn how everybody's different and, and everybody's struggles are different and the things that uh, are a big deal to them might not be a big deal to somebody else but what's not a big deal to that person's a big deal to someone else so uh, just learning how 
even though we're, we were all the same age and all in the same school, everybody had the different circumstances that they had to deal with each day. That's a good start. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when did your passion for NASCAR really take root and lead you to pursuing a career in it? Or I guess how did it take off? Well, I, I tell everybody it's kind of like a ladder. I mean, basically when I raced go-karts was the first step of the ladder. And then when I graduated from North, I, I went to three-quarter midgets. And then I went to full-size midgets and sprint cars and silver crown cars. And then in 95, when we won the three uh, USAC national championships, that's when I got my opportunity to go to both NASCAR and IndyCar in the same year. So we kind of, it was kind of a fork in the road and we were fortunate enough to, the, the IndyCar series only had five races. So the NASCAR team that I signed up with were okay with me going and running those five races plus the races they had scheduled. So I actually ran both of them for uh, three years. And then at that point, I had to make a decision one way or the other whether I wanted to run an 11 race IndyCar schedule at that point or race 33 races with NASCAR. So I chose the NASCAR route. Um, did you ever expect to become such like a household name around Columbus? Not at all, <laughs> not at all. I was the kid, I was still remember, I was the kid that was uh, trying to not get caught the day before we had breaks, uh, spring break and, and uh, was it around Thanksgiving or Christmas break, we would always toilet paper the trees. So we were just trying to be the kid that didn't get caught doing that. I had no idea that I was going to be, um, you know, popular around Columbus like we are. Um, outside of school, what were your main hobbies or pastimes? And like, like anything aside from racing, like why did you choose to do that? And like, what were they? If it was anything. It wasn't anything. That's the thing. <laughs> Literally, when I wasn't in school and and when I wasn't doing homework and and getting that stuff done, I played baseball with my friends. And that was dependent on how much time I needed to spend with the racing, but the racing always came first. Um, so where did you attend college? I did not attend college. You didn't? Okay. So my, my mother and I made a deal that uh, when I graduated high school, I got an opportunity to drive another uh, race car for a guy in, in Columbus. And, and that went through the beginning of what would have been you know my freshman year of college so I'm we made a deal that we would race that year and if, if I didn't run well that I would go to college the next year if I did run well that they would let me continue racing so uh, luckily that first year went well and we got to continue this is probably gonna sound really silly but like I like I was on Wikipedia mm -hmm. and it said it said you went to college in Australia <laughs> I have no These idea. They have questions like to ask you. Yeah, really? and they were like, "It's at Columbus North High School." I was like, "Okay, that's right." And then this weird college in Australia, and I was like, well, "That's funny." Okay, <laughs> okay. I went to Australia, but I didn't go to college. While I, was there. I was so confused. I was like, "I did not know that." Okay, that makes more sense. Um, so, lastly, how did your time at North have an impact on your career choice? Well, I, I think even before I got to high school, I mean, I knew when I was, I mean, I started racing go-karts when I was eight. So the passion, mm -hmm. and I had liked racing. My dad had taken me to races when I was a little kid. So by the time I got to high school, I was very, very focused. I was, by the time I got to high school, I was actually hired as a, a pro, not a professional driver, but I was on a factory go-kart team. So I was, you know, a factory driver for him, so uh, that's why I went and raced national races, and and uh, so I I was very focused on racing at that time. You just the hard part was you didn't know how far you could go. It's and it's literally a, you were it was rungs in that ladder, and you just kept taking one step at a time, and one kept leading to another to another, and the next thing you know, you're at the top of the ladder, you know, racing in NASCAR and IndyCar. Um. Well, this is just a general. When did you retire? Uh, in 2016 from driving. Okay. From driving in NASCAR. Mm -hmm. I still race. I still drive. That's good. Cool. Awesome. Uh, do you have anything else you want to share about your career? Here's a story they might like. So remember the across the street there where the subway is, there, there used to be the Coke machine there. Mm -hmm. So that Coke machine, you know the Coke machine yeah. story? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. The Coke machine story is pretty cool. They're going to say, I haven't heard it. You know, you're yes. excited now, aren't you? Yes. Okay. I, I remember that machine now. I can't remember why I came home that way. <coughs> Excuse me. So yes. one night, <laughs> so one night I'm coming home, and I still had the house that I grew up in in Mead Village across 31 there. And for some reason I came, 
I was coming east on 25th Street and I got the stoplight at the corner of the high school and I looked left and uh, so when we used to get lunch we'd go to the Olympia and it was a dollar fifty for a slice of pizza and then fifty cents for a coke so I had two dollars for lunch every day so I, I just happened to glance over and this was in I think 2001 or 2002 but I glanced over at the coke machine and I was on the coke machine because I was one of the coke family racing drivers so it was just kind of weird and it, and it was two in the morning there wasn't any traffic there and I'm sitting at the stoplight by myself and I just when I looked at it, I was like, wow, I, I used to buy a Coke out of that machine every day, and now I am that machine. And that was the first time that I really realized that I'd made it and, yeah. where, and what had actually happened in my life. It was the connection of this is where I went to school, and I was buying a 50-cent Coke out of there every day, and here we are in 2001 or 2002, and now people are buying a Coke out of a machine that has my picture on it. So that was like... Everything, like I said, happened as like a ladder, so it's just one step at a time so you don't realize how big it was from this step way down here to this step up here till that day happened. And it was like that was the first time that I really realized where, where I had come from and where I was at. That's really neat. Pops. Okay. Check out PK. <laughs> and Mom. Oh. So your dad was a teacher here, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Wait, well, was I? Yeah, I guess he was here. He started it. Well, there was only we one high school then, wasn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. There wasn't two high no, schools yet. Yeah. Yeah. 